So welcome to our most recent sprint review for the last two sprints, 126 and 127. Um, I'm Anne Marie Bro, one of the product owners for Folio. And we have our standard beginnings for this. So um, we have all of the development teams listed here in the slides with hot links to areas on the wiki where they have um, more details about the individual teams and team members. We also have uh, this most important link, which is um, the matrix that shows which team is responsible for which modules um, when it comes to releasing them and maintaining them. So our good lengthy list of teams. Um, the developer section of the wiki is here. And again, you can never talk about the matrix enough. So one more link for that. Where we are in terms of releases, we are still working on getting Hotfix 4 ready for Juniper. Um, there was a go, no go dis, uh, meeting yesterday with capacity planning and um, they we postponed the go, no go to next Monday, the 29th. Um, same thing with the Kiwi general release. Bug Fest is done. Most of the bug fixes are done, although there are still a few that are being finished and checked. Um, Kalila, I don't want to put you on the spot, but any, any other words about the releases? Uh, hey, everyone. Hey, Emery. Um no, no other updates. Okay, so uh, stay tuned next Monday. Um, hopefully, we will have um, good news on the Juniper hotfix and on the Kiwi general release. We link these sprint reviews to a page under each of the releases. So in Kiwi, you'll see the three previous sprint reviews that we had, um, and this one. And just like in all the sprint reviews, we have updates from each of the development teams on what they have accomplished in the last couple of sprints. And we don't spend time looking at each one of these during the meeting, but please feel free to go back and review them. Um, when you have a chance. Most of the teams also have a link to the stories that they've worked on. And as far as demos and um, uh, information today, we have a, a little bit smaller list than normal. Because there's been a lot of bug fixing and testing going on in the last couple of sprints, there hasn't been so much new development. But that said, there are several teams that have either a new development or uh, uh, important bug fixes that they wanna demo. Plus we have updates from the performance task force and from Anton for quality. So with that, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and turn things over to Dennis for Spitfire. Yep, thank you, Anne-Marie. Um, yep. So I'm going to share my screen now. Um, yeah, so uh, in Spitfire team, uh, last sprints, we were mostly working on uh, bug fixes and improvements, but uh, we also um, implemented one um, feature related to holdings records, which is um, creating new uh, mark holdings records uh, directly from um, inventory application. Yeah, so you can see that um, here we have a uh, uh, record with uh, source mark and under actions menu, you can see an option to add mark holdings record. And uh, when you click it, you see that uh, here we have a regular uh, mark, mark form with uh, some uh, values in leader pre-populated. And now we can um, add uh, field that we would like to add. So uh, we need to add an 852 field, which is uh, required for this record. And I'm just going to copy a value that I have uh, 
saved previously. Um, yeah. So this is gonna be a valid value. And let's uh, maybe add some, um, I don't know, 008, uh, perhaps this, uh, field and um, also add some, I, I don't know, just uh, empty values. I think something like this should work. Yeah, and now when we hit save and close, uh, this uh, with, this can take a few seconds to create a new record, but um, when the record is created, user will be redirected to this um, uh, created uh, holdings record. For now, we have um, um, we have this issue when when we uh, first see inventory item, but uh, uh, we were working on a fix for for this issue in this sprint. Uh, and it wasn't merged yet, um, but yes. Yeah, so eventually, uh, user is uh, redirected to the um, created holdings record, and you can see that um, source is mark, which is correct. And yeah, if we go back, you can see that. Well, yeah, uh, this new record is loaded here, and um, yeah, it's uh, successfully created. Mm. Yeah, so I think um, that's all for me. Um, so if uh, anyone has any questions or comments, um, I'll be glad to answer them um, in the chat. So that is very cool. Um, <laughs> and it, so in the 852, you use the the code for the holdings, the KUCCDIM, is that right? To, to get the right holdings assigned? Um, okay. Uh, Kalila, uh, could you help me with this? Uh... Yeah, so Amory, um, subfield B represents the locations that are stored in, in settings. Okay, and you use the code to get yeah, the we, right... Yeah, we use the location... Out. Yeah, we use the location code that's stored in settings for what you see here. Yeah. Great, cool. All right, awesome. Thank you so much, Dennis. And Thank Kalila. you. All right, Thunderjets next, Andre. Yeah, hello, friends and Marie. Let me share my screen. Uh, do you see it? Yes. Cool. Uh, today I'm going to demonstrate uh, two features, one in uh, finance up and uh, the second one is uh, in orders. So let's go to finance group, uh, select. Uh, our demo group. And uh, here we can see uh, found the curtain and uh, now uh, there is a add to group uh, button. So uh, for these purposes, uh, our team implemented a plugin, new plugin, uh, find the fund. So if we click on this button, we'll see. So we can find any fonts uh, select, let's select three of them. And after clicking save, we'll see that, uh, uh, interesting. So uh, our funds uh, were added and uh, financial summary was uh, updated. And uh, one more thing that uh, if we click on it, we'll go to this uh, fund, we'll see that uh, the group is presented. And if we go back uh, to it and uh, scroll right, uh, we'll see the button uh, of uh, deletion. So we can uh, delete it. And let's try to do this. Yes, here's uh, one fund in the group and uh, also financial summary is updated. Uh, the next thing is in uh, orders, uh, PL line and it's a package PL line. And here we can see new accordion, it's package titles. Uh, so it's uh, all linked uh, titles to our package pair line and um, now we can add new one 
from title uh, from PLI and details and uh, yeah, the title uh, was successfully created and added to our PLI. So previously we can uh, do this from uh, receiving app only, but now it's the easiest way to create titles and uh, link it uh, with uh, the package PLN. And uh, that's all I have for today. Thank you very much. So the lookup for the package titles is happening in inventory, is that right? Right, it's a instance of plugin, yeah. Okay, very nice. Uh, 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 Yuri. Yeah, thanks, Anne-Marie. Hi, everyone. I will share my screen. So, one second. So, let me know if you can see it. Yes. Great. So, our team continues to add new features to the receiving app, in particular for working with pieces. And today I want to show you one of them. Uh, this feature is aimed at speeding up the creation of new pieces. Let's imagine that we want to create uh, several slightly different pieces, one after another. Now it's possible to use uh, create another checkbox, both on add piece and edit piece forms. Uh, to demonstrate it, uh, uh, let's create some piece type any data, something like that. Mm -hmm. Something like that and click create another. So as you can see, there are some changes to the buttons. Now let's click uh, save button and see what happens. As we can see, the piece was successfully saved. And after that, add piece model was opened again. We populated uh, values from the previous uh, form. Uh, this way, we don't need to re-enter all the data if we want to change only uh, one value. For example, it can be a caption. So also, we can create a new piece based on uh, existing one. Uh, no matter it uh, expected or received. Uh, let's uh, see, for example, uh, this piece and change. Click create another and click now quick receive. So it's uh, similar behavior. Uh, our piece was saved and successfully received. And after that, a uh, new add piece uh, model form was open again with populated uh, values. So all this will help us to create new pieces much more faster. Uh, that's all from my side. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yuri. Receiving is one of those pieces that just gets bigger and bigger. All right. Um, so next we have Firebird. And Yuri, if you wouldn't mind, stop sharing your screen. Yep. All right, so for Firebird, we're starting with Vladislav. Yeah, hi everyone. Let me share my screen. Uh, I hope you can see it. Yes. Uh, so uh, let's go in the holding since the inventory. Let's find all items. So uh, now we have ability to save holdings UIDs. Uh, so we can save it and uh, we have a file file with the uh, IDs. Can you see it? And uh, generate it with the uh, holdings UIDs. So let's go to the data export. We can choose that file. Yeah. Here we can uh, choose default holdings uh, or instance uh, export. Uh, and also we can, now we can choose uh, uh, what UIDs uh, was provided for this export instance or holdings. Yeah, we can choose holdings and run it. Yeah, yeah as we can see, some was completed with errors. I uh, hope we can fix it uh, in the, uh, this on next print. 
what else I want to show you uh, that in settings, in that export with job profiles. Uh, first of all, we need to create the new job profile. For example, this one. Yeah. And now we have ability to uh, edit it, as we can see, at some description. Yeah, yeah, it's possible. Uh, it updated, and also we can duplicate it. Uh, oh no, not delete. My mistake. And duplicate. As we can see, uh, we have a prefix copy of, so we can choose another name for that one, for example, and change. Yeah. Yeah. So we have a duplicated job profile with changed uh, information. So that's all from my side. Very cool. Um, and I know folks who uh, were sometimes frustrated because you couldn't edit them are going to really like that. Yeah. And uh... So that's awesome. And you snuck in the star. The, uh, the wild card for the inventory search, which is another lovely thing, as long as you don't have a lot of records in inventory. All right, and Sergey. Uh, yes, uh, let me share my screen. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Uh, well, uh, so uh, today I will uh, demo uh, several uh, bug fixes which were found upon uh, <clears throat> Kiwi uh, testing. So the first issue is uh, that um, upon data export, uh, the leader uh, leader status at uh, position number six uh, was uh, changed uh, if um, an instance contains uh, holding and uh, item so it's sometimes it changed uh, from uh, GUVs, which means uh, that uh, it is a uh, projected media to the uh, a mm, to so to, to some other value so i already uh, imported uh, a new instance created uh, holding and uh, item for it so now we can try to uh, so let's first Check that it contains right values. Sorry. Oh, it is not seen. So, okay, let's uh, try to uh, export this record and see the result. Let's wait a little. This is when we need somebody who can tell jokes <laughs> while you're sweating, waiting for this to get to the top of the log list. So it works. Any second, any second now. <laughs> oh, okay. So we have uh, our record exported. Oh, I'm sorry. This is something strange. <laughs> I think it's uh, something wrong with demo. So um, uh, before uh, preparing this presentation, I already uh, completed several imports. Maybe now I'm worrying and uh, doing something wrong. So I can show you uh, the previous uh, export. Oh, sorry. I think. It's something. I think my browser is freezed. 
I did notice that um, it was oh, not possible. I'm sorry, to... I showed <laughs> I showed you wrong downloaded record. That was the previous one. So you can see that uh, the laser position number six uh, was not changed upon this export, and uh, everything works as expected. Uh, so the uh, uh, two more things uh, are related to the circulation log. Uh, the first uh, issue was uh, related to nodes uh, that uh, um, not uh, with uh, action uh, sent error uh, couldn't be exported to the CSV. Uh, so there was an exception and uh, this job uh, failed. So we have fixed uh, this issue and now after the job will be complete. will be able to see that the log works as expected. So the uh, old records were exported. And uh, one more uh, bug related to a circulation log was that uh, the date of uh, these events uh, was uh, in 12 hours format. So we have fixed it and now you can see maybe a little bit. So you can see that now uh, it is formatted in 24 hours format. So basically that's all from me. Good bug fixes. Thank you very much. All right. So uh, now we're on to Falcon and hello, Alexi, old friend. Uh, sorry, Alexi, I won't be present today. I will replace you. Hello, Pavel, new Hello. friend. <laughs> Hello. So uh, today I will present only one story regarding to the authority search and indexing of these records. I will be able to show this only in Postman because it's uh, only ready for in the API, not the UI. So first of all, let's create... Ah, sorry. Are you able to see the screen with Postman? Yes. Yes, cool. So let's create the new authority. Uh, uh, currently, most search supports in only a personal name field. Uh, we are creating. So we have ID of this authority. We can check that it's created by ID. And that's right. And we are able to provide search by ID, this authority ID. And this authority is the same as we created. So also, there is an option that working for now. It's, uh, personal name. So for example, we can use a uh, search by personal name equal, ID, equal to the sample, and we are able to find this. And uh, in the sprint, we will provide more fields to search, it would be uh, other fields from authority, and we will provide more search options and uh, uh, required studies to make search by authorities is beautiful and present. And I guess well, that's me. All right, nice. So y'all are ramping up to do lots of authority work in, um, in Lotus. All right. And so for my guys, Folichet, um, we have uh, a couple of refinements that we've done. Um, so we're going to start with Khamid. Uh, thanks, Anne Marie. Let me share my screen. Just a moment. Okay, let's start. Uh, today, I like to demonstrate new improvement, improved logic for instance type ID. Before I start, I want to explain <coughs> how to uh, resource types map it from the 336 field. We use subfield B for code column and subfield A to name column and each row we may count as instance type id okay let's start i have some preparements uh, before meeting in juniper environment and <clears throat> snapshot load i have loaded resource types mark file with 10 records 
and we have three cases before the fix subfield uh, before the fix uh, only subfield b to map it to instance type id uh, and subfield a does not use in mapping and now uh, we have added this logic for mapping and let me demonstrate uh, these improvements in examples. Okay, first case. We have two subfields, subfield A and subfield B. And for mapping, we use subfield B. It is correct, correctly work in both environments in Bugfest, Juniper and in snapshot load resource type term uh, as you can see is uh, text has text value and type code has txt value in the same situation in snapshot load but in second case we have uh, some strange situation in backfest juniper Resource type term has unspecified value and resource type code has 3z value. But in this case, uh, we should use a subfield for 336 uh, field and map it text and txt value to in snapshot load after fix. Uh, we can see we use instance type ID, which uh, provides text and txt value for type code and type there. And last case is when we don't have subfield B and subfield A, or these subfields does not map to resource type or type term, uh, we should assign unspecified value to type term and type code uh, should has a 3z value. Uh, in mark file, it is last record. Uh, we can see performant value, but performant value does not, uh, resource types in both environments has not these values. Sorry. On both environments and just a moment. and resource type term and resource type code has instance type ID with value unspecified. This situation on the uh, in this snapshot load too. That's it for me. If Good. you have any questions, you can ask me. Well, you've already gotten a yay from Jen Gold at Cornell, so. Thank you very much. And Thank you. first first demo for the sprint reviews. And Thank I think you too. May also win for the longest name in the in the participants. All right. And then we have um, Ruslan who's going to show something about invoices. See my screen? Yep, just get a little closer to your microphone. Sure. So um, uh, today I'm going to demonstrate uh, multi fields uh, mapping syntax extension for defunct records. Um, previously, we could specify only one edifact field uh, 
for the same invoice or invoice line uh, field, but sometimes it is necessary to map multiple fields uh, uh, to the uh, one field, same as we have for Mark, Sin uh, Mark Syntax mapping for now. And, uh, for demonstration purpose, I'm going to import uh, the following uh, default record and uh, I'm going uh, to grab uh, this uh, data from uh, uh, this uh, IMD uh, fields with the uh, 085 and 086 uh, within. Uh, so I mentioned these fields in such, uh, invoice line subscri subscription info with uh, hyphen separator also uh, for demonstration I've put uh, the same uh, uh, mapping syntax uh, with the space separator for invoice line comment and uh, I'm going to grab data from RFF, API and NID fields uh, as uh, invoice node. So let's import this described record. I'm going to import some Harasevich serial invoice. Hey, Anya, time for another joke. Why do cows lack toes? <laughs> and um, here we can observe our uh, invoice lines uh, that were created within imported invoice. And um, yeah, also. Here we can verify uh, uh, mapped the newly created invoice and uh, I'm going to find an invoice application newly created invoice using vendor uh, invoice number to verify multi fields mapping. So uh, here we have for invoice lines, uh, invoice line subscription subscription info, uh, concatenated data from multiple fields with hyphen separator between uh, for the invoice line comment. Here we have data uh, uh, with uh, blink separ separator and uh, also invoice uh, node uh, was filled in with. Um, data from RFF and NAD fields. So I believe that's it for me. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, please ask. All right, thank you so much, Ruslan. And Anya messed up her joke. I did, it's not as funny now, work on it. <laughs> All right, so those are all our demos, but we have two more important things. Um, PTF has been doing a ton of uh, testing with circulation um, through the course of the Kiwi development. And so Martin is here to give us a quick summary of it. Hi everyone, um, let me share my screen here. Okay, can you see my screen yet? Yes. Great. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about the check-in, check-out workflow performance in Kiwi. Um, check-in, check-out is one of the main workflows in Folio. Uh, in the Kiwi release, just as in other uh, releases since uh, Fanflower, the performance task force tested, tested both check-in and check-out with one, five, uh, eight and 20 users loads. And here are the results. On average, check-in uh, takes no more than 900 milliseconds 
and check out uh, takes about 1.5 um, seconds uh, for up to 20 users. Even in the um, 75th percentile range uh, with 20 users, it still take under one second to check out and a little over 1.5 seconds to, uh, sorry, um, yeah, uh, a little uh, over 1.5 seconds to check out and under a second to check in. This is great res uh, results as there isn't a big gap um, in performance between the five users uh, and up to the 20 users load. Uh, so if you want to take a look at the details of the numbers, please go to the uh, test report page here. So uh, how do the Kiwi results compare to the previous folio releases? Here I have uh, a chart showing the results of the eight users uh, tests um, of all the releases uh, since FemFlower. And uh, you can see how Kiwi stack up against them. Eight users is a uh, typical uh, small library load. Um, so the good news is that Kiwi has the best results. Um, other than the uh, uh, regressions um, that, that we see in Honeysuckle, Iris, and Juniper, GA, the, the trend mainly has been positive. Um, the response times uh, trended down. Um, with Honeysuckle, um, Iris, and, and Juniper, GA, uh, we can see both the check-in and check-out time uh, regressed greatly. Uh, this was due to many factors, some of which included the automated patron blocks call that was 150% uh, uh, slower than in Goldenrod, for example. The get circulation loans were slower, or copy used more CPU cycles for logging, um, et cetera. But these issues were addressed over the next three releases. In uh, Juniper Hotfix 3, uh, the Vega team did a great job of uh, implementing optimistic locking for the automated patron blocks call to not have to read from the database several times uh, in an effort to ensure that there was no race condition. Uh, the core platform team addressed an issue where the prepared statement was not closed after each use, which led to increased memory database consumption and overall performance uh, degradation. And finally, in Kiwi, the core platform team implemented the unique item barcode index uh, in mod inventory storage to efficiently look up an item by barcode. This call is used by many other API calls in the check-in checkout workflow. So improving it also improves other API response times. And uh, um, here were the, the, the key uh, zeros that were resolved that led to the Kiwi performance um, that we see today. So in closing, um, we need to work together to continue to stay on top of Folio's performance, especially the check-in check-out workflow um, to make sure that we improve performance and not uh, regress. When writing code, we must remember to close um, resources such as uh, HTTP clients or database connections. Failure to do so lead to memory leaks and uh, uh, obviously performance uh, degradation. Uh, we should add indexes where appropriate, uh, evaluate different kinds of indexes before adding them. And finally, we should be mindful of the cost of calling APIs, which incurs overheads of calling mod auto, auto token per call uh, or fending out to calling other APIs behind the scene that we may not be aware of. So that's all from PTF. Any questions? Any reaction from the, the folks that have been experiencing unhappy circulation? I think it's a, a great um, example of how PTF can help and why it's so important to be checking performance after there's major um, architecture changes or functionality that's added or changed. So uh, a really good advertisement for the services of PTF as well. Thank you, Martin. Thank you, Anne Marie. All right. All right. And as always, last but not least, we have Anton. Let me stop sharing with my screen here. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Just give me a second. So, uh, 
as Anne Marie mentioned, we have um, we very close to release um, Kiwi, and all fingers crossed, uh, it will be done next week. We have only five issues to clean up, so I just want to um, show you how we did. Um, uh, uh, during Kiwi Bug Fest in respect to Juniper. So how did those two releases compare? Well, first thing I would like to mention that Kiwi release was a much more feature rich uh, release. It had more stories included in it and uh, Juniper was more, uh, more like a bug fixing and cleanup release. So they not apples and apples and it, it kind of shows, but at the end of the day, we um, we uh, we have uh, one week delay compared to plan. But again, the product is huge, and uh, I, I just want to give you all guys kudos for pulling it through. So the first slide shows uh, what state Bugfest had after uh, two weeks of testing. Yeah, so it was. Uh, end of the bug fest, uh, but uh, testing, but not end of the bug fix period. So we had 4% uh, less uh, 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 test cases that passed during Kiwi. Uh, we had uh, more uh, unfinished test cases, and we had pretty much the same number of failed test cases. So Providing that we had much more functionality um, stories to uh, to implement during Kiwi, I think it's uh, uh, actually pretty, uh, it looks pretty good to me. Uh, so, and this is what we have right now. So it's um, as of Monday, where we stand with all the bug fixing. So we equally at 98% with, um, Kiwi having more test cases, uh, like uh, 80 more test cases has been added to Kiwi. So uh, we are uh, apples to apples here in terms of uh, what, what's been deferred and what's been passed uh, with the caveat that we had more test cases. So uh, we are looking good to release, except we do have five more issues that were identified that must be included into, into Kiwi. In terms of number of defects that has been found by our volunteer testers, we have an uptick of uh, by 60%. So they found 122 test cases and about 20 of them were duplicates, cannot reproduce and won't do, um, but total was uh, filed 122. And in Juniper, the total was filed 76. So it represents uptick of uh, 60%. So it means that you guys had to work uh, harder during the bug fixing period to, to fix more issues. Same thing applies to, um, to overall issues. This is just all the issues that um, teams had to fix, uh, including, bug uh, including issues found uh, during Bugfest, um, uh, so found by volunteers. Uh, and uptick is 41%. So uh, in Juniper, we had to fix only 177 issues. In Kiwi, it is um, 251. So we had to fix more, but we pulled it. Uh, you guys pulled it in on time. So um, great, uh, great job. And the last one is actually the pleasant surprise. We did much better on the smoke test. So the smoke test, it's we do it. Um, uh, like, uh, last few days before we call, uh, try to uh, announce a release to make sure that all the bug fixing that we uh, introduced didn't break anything. So it's a small test of 173 test cases. And during Kiwi, uh, we did much better. We, um, so we had much higher uh, past, uh, past rate. Uh, we had very good um, 
participation. We didn't have, um, we practically didn't have any test cases left. So much better looking test run compared to the smoke test for, uh, for Juniper. And those three failed test cases, they are the same as I mentioned before. So, so this is things that has to be fixed before Kiwi goes out, uh, hopefully next week. So uh, overall guys, great job. And we got another release, um, almost got another release out. I mean, it's a matter of few days until we announce the GA. And um, I hope you're proud of the effort and work that you've done. So thank you very much. Uh, let me stop, uh, stop sharing. Oh, here we go. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Anton. And if Anton's happy, I guess we're all happy, right? So let me quickly share my screen again. All right. So um, next two sprints are regular size sprints. We are starting to get into the holidays, so um, things may get a little um, um, off schedule. I'm, I'm not sure if we have any three week sprints planned in uh, late December or January, but there's a link to the sprint calendar. Um, we uh, main focus for most everybody is making sure the last bits of the Kiwi fixes are done and uh, a couple still have some remaining Juniper hot fix fours that they're finishing up. Um, I've lost my cursor. You've got plans for the coming sprints from all of the various teams. I am delighted to say that we are finally done with, I don't know how many hundreds of uh, uh, big test rewrites, and we are starting our first end-to-end -end test in Volajet. And the carrot of the end-to-end -end test is that we get to start retiring some of the manual test rail uh, tests as we automate them. So looking forward to that and looking forward to me fixing typos at the same time. Um, you'll see though the plans for everybody. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to the individual teams and the individual product owners. And this will make it to YouTube in the next day or two, along with a link to the slides. So we are done almost uh, half the time as usual. Are there any questions or any topics anybody wants to bring up since we have a couple minutes, more than a couple minutes? Uh-oh, Anya, it's the dad jokes from Anya. How do you pre prevent a bagel from escaping? Okay, put locks on it. Oh yeah, all the kids get uh, little jokes in their lunch boxes every day <laughs> to the point where all of their friends ask them what their jokes are. And I have a high schooler, so. Um, it's like fortune cookies, right? <laughs> exactly. I got I got the dad jokes down. All right. Quality B buns on the regular. And yes, I think we can all agree that Anya is pretty darn amazing. So, <laughs> all right. Thank you, everybody, for the great work on Kiwi and on to Lotus. We're all getting. Uh, started or well underway with our Lotus development now. And um, everybody who's in the US have a great Thanksgiving. It's gonna get quiet from the US folks for the end of the week, um, but we will return in force next week. So thanks everyone for a great couple sprints and we'll talk again soon. <laughs>